This is Eric Chang. Eric Chang has been filming some of my absolute favorite drone-made videos, uh, including uh, that Steamer's Lane clip. Uh, all shot from uh, you're using DJI Phantom, GoPro, Hero 3s. And um, I just want to ask, like, wh how did you get started with this, and, um, and, and where do you see this going? Uh, I, I actually got started in private a long time ago uh, by flying toys around uh, and you know just imagining one day that I'd be able to put something in the air without the investment of cracking you know open source uh, and open hardware stuff um, which now is, has come along but I think in 2006 it was pretty primitive and um, all the instructions were in German you know that's wiki for microcopter and I just decided you know I'm gonna wait a few years <laughs> uh, until things mature a bit um, and things really matured quickly and so um, this year, you know, we've gone from seeing almost none of these things in the air to uh, being almost commonplace. What do you think it was that uh, created uh, sort of a, a breakthrough, and and why why are we starting to see so many of these things flying around now? Well, I would get I I tend to separate the maker movement and the sort of push for mass consumer adoption, and I think we're seeing both of those progressing at an incredible rate right now. Um, and here, you know, we have such diversity in these things that are flying around, one right over our head right now. You know, everything from ready-to-made, uh, ready-to-fly copters to, you know, total homemade projects. And, um, and so, uh, I don't, I, I'm just super excited. I mean, they're just, it's, uh, uh, you know, the opportunities are sort of endless right now. So your setup, you primarily use uh, the, the ready-to-fly Phantom. Um, how, how much modification do you do with yours? Uh, well, I got the Phantom, the original Phantom, when it first came out. And um, if you wanted to do anything it wasn't designed to do, you had to essentially become a hobbyist. And so, you know, within a couple of weeks, I was soldering and going to hobby shops, <laughs> ordering all the, all the little parts I needed to do, FPV flying. And, uh, you know, I hacked together my own gimbals and things like that before they were available uh, for, the, you know, for mass market. Um, but the industry is moving so quickly that, you know, within six months, suddenly there were pro products that you could just buy and they were a lot more expensive and I think it will, it will always be like that. Um, but I think it's, it's been really important to continue to build things in my garage on the side because I, I don't think I would understand how these things work, certainly not how to repair them, if I weren't building, uh, you know, multi-copters on the side as well. Yeah, it's actually, it's a really interesting point because, uh, you know, there, there's been so much of an upbringing in the, say, the, the multi-copter world uh, from that, that DIY perspective. Uh, it, it's been interesting for me to think about what happens when they become uh, much more commercially available on a mass market scale and how do people react to that uh, compared to people who've trained themselves to be pilots and flyers. You think about that much? Yeah, I do. And, um, you know, I don't think there's, there, there's any replacement for, for training and practice. And, uh, <laughs> and in fact, many of my friends have lost, uh, lost multi-rotors to, to the ocean, and in, including me. Um, and in all of it, I'm almost all of in almost all those cases, uh, the crashes could have been prevented, but people were too excited about what they were going to do. You know, the first time you put something above and you see that new perspective, um, it's tempting just to push it a little further. But of course, if you're over water, it's, uh, it's the, you know, the, the crash is catastrophic. So. So one of the things uh, you, you wrote for the drones issue is the uh, how to do fantastic aerial video, uh, which is a great piece. Thank you for putting that together for us. Um, but give a quick run through of any tips that you might have for budding videographers, aerial videographers? I mean, the, the biggest tip is really to fly all the time. Uh, and that doesn't mean flying with the uh, rig that you've meticulously put together for aerial imaging. Um, but I always have a second or a third quadcopter, um, whether it's ready to fly or homemade, uh, that I can use for practicing without having to worry about destroying my camera if I crash it. So, you know, I think, um, the, you know, practice, that's the most important thing. Um, the second thing is having a a plan for the sort of footage you want to come back with. You know, if you go on YouTube and do a search for any quadcopter, you know, uh, just search for quadcopter, you'll find, you know, a th a thousands of backyard videos and park videos. No, nobody really wants to see those. C certainly, I don't want to see them. And in fact, I run a, a group on Facebook, and one of the rules is no backyard videos, like no park videos. We just don't want to see these test videos um, because they're interesting from a learning perspective, but they don't ins they don't inspire people when compared to you know, footage of something um, that tells a story. Right, right. So, what uh, what do you have in the works? What's what's the next one that that, that we'll be able to see from you? Uh, well, in a couple of weeks, I'm heading to Indonesia for uh, one of the dive trips that I've been running pretty much every year for a long time now. 
Um, only this year we're, we will have uh, quadcopters on board, so that will change things a lot. Um, and uh, so I'm looking forward to, to having footage of uh, basically South Komodo and a lot of the wildlife there uh, from the air. That sounds great. I can't wait to see it. Well, thanks again for um, putting together a great article, shooting amazing videos that keep me really excited and uh, helping uh, keep the community uh, moving forward and all this stuff.